You think you know Futurama? Well, here's 10 things you may not have known about the employees of Planet Express. It's the future. My parents, my co-workers, my girlfriend. I'll never see any of them again. Yahoo! Matt Groening and David X. Cohen pitched Futurama to the Fox Broadcasting Company in April of 1999, after Fox approached Groening about creating a new series. Drawing heavily from their favorite science fiction films, TV shows, and books, Groening and Cohen generated a large number of characters and storylines. However, Groening claims that the process of getting Fox to agree to all of their ideas was, quote, by far the worst experience of my grown-up life. It's possible she's still alive in another dimension somewhere. Right, Professor? Oh, oh yes, uh, absolutely. Not a chance. <laughs> After much deliberation, Fox agreed to purchase 13 episodes of Futurama. Fox quickly became nervous about airing the show based on such content as the suicide booths and the antisocial character of Bender. Please select mode of death, quick and painless, or slow and horrible. Yeah, I'd like to place a collect call. You have selected slow and horrible. Good choice. Fox had previously given graining carte blanche with The Simpsons, and when he asked for the same treatment on Futurama, Fox explained, well, we don't do business that way anymore. Groening responded, oh, well, that's the only way I do business. Because episodes of Futurama are produced concurrently, it can take between six and nine months to complete a single episode of the show. The title Futurama comes from a pavilion at the 1939 World's Fair, which claimed to portray what the world would look like two decades later. Other titles that were pitched were Aloha Mars and Doomsville. Many said I was too extreme when I first called for the annihilation of the human species, as well as some of the more cunning monkeys. But after living on Earth, I can tell you that I am, if anything, too merciful. The theme song for Futurama was produced by Christopher Ting and is based off a 1967 song by electronic music pioneer Pierre Henry. Series writer Patrick M. Verone claimed that the writing staff for Futurama were, quote, easily the most over-educated cartoon writers in history. There were three PhDs, seven master degrees, and more than 50 years of Harvard education among the entire writing staff. Step right up, who wants to learn physics? Keep your hands inside the car at all times. Good old Coney Island College, go Whitefish! In fact, there is a real-life mathematical theorem called the Futurama Theorem, otherwise known as Keeler's Theorem. Series writer Ken Keeler created mathematical proof for reversing the results of a body swap scenario in the episode The Prisoner of Benda. We'll simply switch bodies, and then we'll... we'll... No, I'd be back in my body, but then you and Bender would be switched. And the Amy and Bender bodies can't trade minds again since they just did. Oh, no! What's the very first dialogue we hear from Bender? It's his now famous catchphrase, Bite my shiny metal ass. He would say this phrase in nearly every episode of the show. Matt Groening likes to use his character names as homages for other works and creators that he enjoys. Bender is named after John Bender from The Breakfast Club, Leela is named after the character Leela from Doctor Who, and Fry's middle initial J is a reference of Rocky and Bullwinkle creator J. Ward. For this reason, many of Groening's characters have J as their middle initial. Philip J. Fry, Hubert J. Farnsworth, Homer J. Simpson, Bart J. Simpson. The show creators developed an alien language called Alienese that was a simple substitution cipher for English, which fans quickly deciphered. The creators then went on to create two far more complex languages to try and stump their audience. Wow, now this is fantastic. Hmm, I'm not sure we want to pay for a dimension we're not going to use. And here's a bonus one. David X. Cohen is a huge fan of Dungeons and Dragons. This was made apparent with the numerous references in the show, including creatures such as Rust Monsters and Beholders as characters in the show, and also having Gary Gygax as a guest voice. The third Futurama film, Bender's Game, had a storyline heavily influenced by role playing games and was dedicated to the memory of Mr. Gygax. That's it for this episode of You Think You Know TV. Make sure you subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get the latest movie and TV news on ScreenCrush.com. 